nine o'clock in the morning. You're eating a bowl of pasta? No, I'm eating a bowl of the Bisco Zidios. <laughs> of course I'm eating pasta. I need to gain weight. I'm wasting away, Dorothy. What do you mean? I got weighed this morning. I couldn't believe what I saw. 98 pounds. What do you usually weigh? 99. Ah, you lost one pound. Thank you, Rene Descartes. I'm looking for advice, not arithmetic. Ma, you cannot get upset over one pound. Maybe you can't, I can't. For 50 years, my weight hasn't changed by an ounce. And as far as I'm concerned, until I'm back to 99, I'm no longer Sophia Petrillo. Morning, Daddy. Morning, Sophia. Who? Daddy. Do you realize it's only two weeks till Phyllis Strickler's Memorial Day beach party? That means it's only two weeks till we have to get back to our bathing suits again. Well, I just slipped into last year's bikini, and uh, I think I look pretty good, but you give me your honest advice. Can I still pull it off? Right now, I'd be surprised if you could cut it off. <laughs> Are you implying that I might have gained weight? There's only one way to find out. Here's the scale. Oh, fine. But I know it's not a good sign when the first rebound goes into the low 120s. <laughs> oh, Blanche, honey, don't worry. All you need is a little spring tune-up. I suppose you don't. No, not really. <laughs> Prove it. Put your money where your mouth is. If there isn't already a sweet roll there. <laughs> right, all right, but now nobody looked. I always thought you had to pass zero to hit that number. Obviously, the scale is broken. I'm not surprised after that kind of punishment. <laughs> All right, Rose, you think you're so tiny. Why don't you get weighed? Oh, I don't need to, Dorothy. I never gain weight. Show us, Rose. Well, okay, but I can promise you I weigh exactly the same as I did on my wedding day. Obviously, we all need to lose a few pounds. And we might as well start right now. It's still two weeks until Phyllis is part. Oh, but how? <laughs> we could try another health club. Oh, no way, Rose. I'm sure you haven't forgotten what happened that time we tried that. Oh, Remember God. the outfits that oh, we ended Lord, up with? Oh, Lord, how mercy. Well, this seems like a nice club. But it's for women only. What's wrong with a nice co-ed gym we just saw? <laughs> Come on now, Blanche, that was nothing but a pickup scene. People running around in skimpy outfits collecting phone numbers. That's not true. I was not in a skimpy outfit and I got all these. <laughs> Hello, my name is Yvonne. Have you been here before? See, go to a woman's gym, you get hit on by a woman. <laughs> I work here. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to imply anything. She just thought you were a lesbian. <laughs> Yvonne, we want to join a gym. Well, what kind of exercise are you interested in? Oh, nothing radical. Just yeah. lose a few pounds. Tone up. Yeah, slim down. Get into my summer wardrobe. Get into my winter wardrobe. Get into my bathrobe. <laughs> Yvonne, we are desperate women. You've got to help us. I know just what you need. Aerobics. It's what I do. But Yvonne, you're much younger than they are. <laughs> I know you love aerobics. It stretches every muscle in your body. Honey, I've been stretching this body for years. Blanche, sticking your feet out of the sunroof of a Chrysler New Yorker doesn't count. We have a beginner's class starting in 15 minutes. With some hard work, your body can look as good as mine. All right, we better get you some outfits. Oh, it's okay. We brought our sweats. Sweats? Look, ladies, if you're serious about training, you want to get off on the right foot, starting with good workout shoes. Now, these are beautiful and a bargain at $85. $85? That's a bit exorbitant. And expensive, too. <laughs> well, we do have cheaper brands, but anyone who's, you know, serious about training wouldn't even go near them. Well, then we'll take those. 
fine. You'll also need aerobic suits, warm-up outfits, wristbands, headbands, leg warmers. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Leg warmers? Well, you need something to keep your thighs warm. What are you using now? Friction. That's why we're here. <laughs> Ladies, I'm sorry. When you told me you were serious, I took you literally. Just forget this stuff. Wear your sweats. Oh, no, 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 Yvonne, we want all that stuff. Yeah, we do, we really yeah. do. Well, I don't. I want to stick with my sweatsuit and my PF flyers. <laughs> I'll see you girls in the locker room. Vaughn, she's not serious. Never has been, never will be. <laughs> okay, then you'll need new gym bags, water bottles, vitamin packs, and most importantly, a sports training bra to minimize jiggle and bounce. Yvonne, honey, I think you're missing the whole point of having breasts. <laughs> we'll take them. back up to 99 pounds. We'll see. Wrong again, Kreskin. Still 98. 98 pounds. I can't remember the last time I weighed 98. Probably college. Where'd you go to college, Blanche? The University of Jupiter? <laughs> Girls, we still have one big problem to solve. How are we going to make ourselves look good for the party? How else, Rose? By dieting. It's going to take a little patience and a little determination but mostly it's going to take willpower we are facing some long painful hunger pang filled nights who wants to lick the spoon i, I do, do. <laughs> maybe we could just change our hairdos now we cannot do that dorothy i'm still trying to recover from the last time remember about same time of year two years ago oh, was that little that little dinky place with that This was such a good idea. I think you're right, Dorothy. Maybe I should have done my own hair. I've been doing it for years. That's why it looks like something you buy on a stick at halftime. <laughs> Sophia, we're just a little bit nervous. This is a very important event. We want to look perfect. Please, the band works with scissors, not a sandblaster. <laughs> Ma, this is all a mistake. We don't belong here. This is one of those Miami Beach shops for little old ladies. Come on, let's get out of here. All right, ladies. Whose hair do I wash next? Mine. <laughs> I'm first. I'm the dirtiest. <laughs> oh, God, you are gorgeous. Yes, I know. I am Eduardo. Oh, Eduardo, tonight is very important to us. We want to look our best. Don't worry, ladies. After Eduardo does a woman's hair, the years melt away. She is transformed into a breathtaking, sensuous, vivacious goddess of beauty. I tried to get all that on a sign, but they charge by the letter. <laughs> Perhaps we should begin by your telling me what you would like me to do. Here, I have a picture. This is not you. You are a vixen. 
For you, I see a saucier cut, an Audrey Hepburn look. Simple, elegant, and something to accept these delicate features. Can you really do all that? Well, my dear, my dear respect, styling hair is like making love. To do it well, one must have trust, respect, and a chair you can pump up and down. I am your clay. Mold me. Not so fast, Eduardo. What are you going to do with me? You have good bones. Yes, this is a strong, noble face full of wisdom and sincerity. You could be a Greek goddess. Oh, go on, Eduardo. I say go on, Eduardo. He's barely got it out once with a straight face. What about me? Could I be a goddess too? No, no. You are an earth mother. Sweet, compassionate, but bubbling with sexuality just below the surface. Oh, that's a relief. All this time I thought it was gas. Then is it time? Time to walk through the looking glass. Time to take that last glimpse of your former selves. Time to take that giant step into the world of Eduardoism. You've been drinking again, haven't you? Right. The magic begins. Oh, I'm feeling younger and sexier already. Don't how do I look? Like something that came out of the air duct of the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> look better for that party okay let me think it's too bad we're not back home there's no place like sicily why do you say that sophia because in sicily i could solve this whole problem with one phone call to who nicodemo the ugly whenever you want him to look gorgeous at a party you hired him to be your date you mean women paid him to stand next to them at parties and look disgusting <laughs> please they paid through the nose that's also how we usually gave them their change. <laughs> Girls, maybe we don't even need to worry about their bodies. At the counseling center, we teach people that changing their dispositions can sometimes be just as effective in making a good impression. Oh, Rose, if you're thinking of one of those personality-enhancing exercises, you're forgetting we tried that already once, too. And I'll never try Don't you remember again. that for three years oh, ago? It seems like yes. Oh, can't yes. Can't remember? Damn. What's the matter, pussycat? Uh, I can't balance my checkbook. Ah, oh, the hell with it. I'm only off by a few pennies. A few pennies? To you, it may not be much, but back in Sicily, a few pennies could make the difference between owning a gun and having to insert bullets into your victim manually. <laughs> okay, Ma, I'll try it again. But believe me, there was nothing in this world I hate more. I spoke too soon. <laughs> It's me, Stan. Wait, let me rephrase that. It's me, the new Stan. What are you talking about? Don't you notice a difference? Can't you see the glow? Can't you see the light radiating off of me? Sure, it's the porch light wearing off your head. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I heard a man's thought. Oh, it's you, Stan. I'm so happy you're all here. I have just had an incredible experience that I wanted to share with my dearest friends. So what are you doing here? 
just finished a seminar with an encounter group called Realizations. Realizations. Let me guess. It's a group that promises to remove all emotional blocks, self-denial, and lifelong hang-ups in two days. Miss Know-it-all, for your information, it takes three days. <laughs> so what did it do for you? I've learned a hell of a lot about what makes Stanley run. Why I'm so reluctant to make commitments, why I can't keep friends, why all my business ventures seem to fail. I finally have an answer. Because you're a schmuck? <laughs> Did you take this seminar? Stan, I think we've heard enough. Look, I've gone through a life-changing experience. I feel like I'm free to love anybody. Oh, please. You said the same thing after you had your vasectomy. <laughs> In realizations, I learned that people usually hurt each other unintentionally. Therefore, they deserve a second chance. I hate you. <laughs> Nothing can bother Not now. I'm in a fellowship that accepts me, cares for me, and loves me. They'll always be there for me. And I'd like to enroll all of you in that fellowship. No. <laughs> but you've got to. Why? Because if I don't meet my quota for enrolling new people in this loving, accepting, caring fellowship, they're going to kick me out in the street and never speak to me again. <laughs> At least hear me now. All right, Stanley, we'll listen to what you have to say. Beautiful. <clears throat> How about we all go someplace and get comfortable, get some coffee, have something to eat? I'll go change. Why? We're only going into the kitchen. <laughs> Hope you have some cheesecake. Stan, that's it. I've had it with your freeloading. Get out. Dorothy, you have so much hostility, so much aggression, so much mistrust. This problem goes deeper than I thought. I'm going to eat a steak with that cheesecake. Get out. <laughs> out. I'll just leave you the brochure. Can you believe that man? He actually thought he was going to help us. Well, he did have one good idea. What was that? Cheesecake. <laughs> you know, Dorothy, to this day, I cannot understand what you ever saw in that man. Picture a man 20 pounds lighter, long, wavy hair, rippling muscles. I can't believe Stan ever looked like that. He didn't. But do you think if I ever met a man who looked like that, I would have married Stan? <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't be so tough on the guy. This brochure actually looks interesting once you get past the picture of the guy in the turban waving from the front seat of the Rolls Royce. <laughs> so you know, those things are just silly. The unexamined life is a life not worth living. That's very deep. And if you're into this stuff, very reasonable. It's 1795 for that slogan printed on a turban-shaped nightlight. Oh, that is so typical. All those swamis are just out for a buck. I mean, they can't teach you anything that anyone with any common sense doesn't already know. I didn't know that. Visual aid. Oh, really, Ram Dass? If it's all so easy, let's hear you answer this question. Describe your best friend. Ooh, Dorothy, that's a really good question. Oh, yes, and I'd love to hear the answer. Well, my best friend is a woman. Someone I have a great deal in common with. She pretty? <laughs> yeah, she's attractive. Attractive as in wholesome? Or attractive as in drop-dead stunningly gorgeous? <laughs> attractive as in attractive. <laughs> All right, what else? She's someone I share my innermost secrets with and strictest confidence. You mean like the time you told me you borrowed Blanche's car, dented it, and said the bag boy at the grocery store did it? That's not a secret. I just forgot to mention it. I think she means more like the time she told me that she went skinny dipping with your cousin Lars before you gave up the pulpit back in St. Gustav. That's a better example of a secret. Oh, if you have been talking about me, I'm your best friend. She's been talking about me, Blanche. No, I haven't been talking about either one of you. What? I've been talking about both of you. I mean, how could I choose between you two? You're both my best friends. Dorothy, how sweet. Oh, 
Ooh, that just gives me a warm, tingly feeling all over. If you'll excuse me, I, I'm going to go slip under the covers and enjoy it. <laughs> She's gone. You can tell me the truth. You were talking about me, weren't you? <laughs> That's okay. It'll be our own little secret. <laughs> that and the dent in Blanche's car. <laughs> You are such a liar. What? Neither one of them is your best friend. Admit it. I'm your best friend. You're right. I was talking about you, Ma. You are my best friend. Just like I'm your best friend. Best friend? Please, you aren't even my favorite child. <laughs> when you were 13, there were neighbor children I liked better. Best friend. Once in a while, pal of mine, or letting me open my own social security check. That's right. Yeah, right. Not <laughs> Alexis, I certainly did not enhance things around here. Yeah. Mm, I wouldn't say that. After Ma blabbed the truth, you turned the silent treatment into an art form. Here's my cake. Oh, Ma, now you cannot eat cake after that big bowl of pasta. It's not healthy. Sophia, you know, I just thought of something. You're worried about losing a pound? Well, have you ever thought you may not be the same height you always were? You know, Ma Blanche could be right. This could be exactly why you're losing weight. Come with me. Remember the first week you were here, we put a mark on the back wall to measure how tall we were? You said they did that at the home to show how your height was declining. <laughs> Ma Blanche is right. You are a little bit shorter. Then you don't have to worry about losing weight. And you don't have to eat that cake. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling you three are most happy about the last part? Oh, you mean <laughs> us have some cake, honey? We can't do that. We're dieting. Sure smells good, though. Looks even better. That shit tastes even better than that. <laughs> you three are dieting. I'm throwing it away. Don't! don't. <laughs> Oh, girls, we can't do this. Now, remember the party. It's two weeks from Saturday. No, it isn't. This year, Phyllis moved it to Sunday. Then we have an extra day. We <laughs> worry about our bodies tomorrow. I'll get the plates. I'll get the fork. I'll get the hot fudge. I'll get the butter. We may have to grease the doorway to get the three of you out of here. <laughs> which means lonely, middle-aged woman desperate to meet men. Oh, is that a uh, clue on your crossword puzzle? No, I'm getting your personalized license plate for your car. <laughs> Here goes, sweetheart. Dorothy, have you ever heard of something called dirty dancing? Well, of course, Blanche. They did it in that movie. What movie? Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> This flyer that came in the mail says they're going to start a dirty dancing course down at Lawson's Dance Studio. What do you say, Dorothy? Oh, uh, no. I can't see myself swinging my hips and wildly gyrating my pelvis. I am not interested. <laughs> and the world heaves a collective sigh of relief. <laughs> Rose, how about you? You want to learn dirty dancing? I don't know. For some odd reason, dirty dancing always sounds... Dirty. Come on, Rose. You know you like dancing. Well, I like square dancing. This is just like square dancing. All right, count me in. Great. Just one thing. When you do see -si do, your legs are wrapped around your partner's neck. Oh, look, it's a letter from my friends Philomena and Dominic Bosco back in Sicily. Oh. They're visiting Miami and they're bringing their daughter, Gina. Who are they? Oh, well, Gina and I were born within minutes of each other at the same hospital in Brooklyn. That's when Ma became friendly with Philomena before the family moved back to Sicily. Will the Boscos be staying with us, Sophia? Unless there's a bidding war with the neighbors. <laughs> well, even 
even if we lose, at least I'll be close by. <laughs> Don't worry. There won't be any trouble. They'll all stay in my room. Oh, Ma, three people in one bed? What will the Bosco say? If you throw in a goat, they'll say this is just like home. <laughs> Hi, Ma. Or oh, here, Dorothy. I wonder what you think of my pasta pesto. It's for the Boscos. They'll be here any minute. Ma, this is awful. I'm also buying the crud off the sink stop. <laughs> Try the other pot. Oh, not so bad, really, although it was harder than I expected, but I'm sure that in time I'll be able to master the technique and absorb the subtleties. She's stuck. <laughs> but the teacher said I was a natural. Oh, well, let me get this straight. Blanche couldn't get the hang of dirty dancing, but you could? Dorothy, now do you see why I'm so embarrassed? Can you imagine a dance with movements just like making love and I can't do it? Relax, Blanche. Maybe standing up is what's throwing. Can't you 
find a better place to clip your toenails. Don't call me Ma. Call me Sophia like my other friends. Ma, I am very upset, so please stop teasing me. Dorothy, I've never told this to anyone before. The day I left the hospital with you, I had a gnawing feeling in the pit of my stomach. Because you suspected I wasn't your daughter? No, because I was in labor for 38 hours. And the doctor who delivered you bought his obstetric tools from a restaurant supply store. Now stop talking crazy and go to bed. Good night. You got a cough drop? No. <coughs> Hard candy? No. A Tic Tac? Does it say Kmart on the back of my nightgown? As a matter of fact, it does, you cheapskate. You know, Ma, I remember when I was a little girl. Oh, God. I used to have these terrible nightmares, you know, monsters in the closet, and you'd always let me sleep in your room. You remember, Ma? And I remember how you and Pop would get me to stop crying. You'd put your arms around me and kiss me and say, as long as you're in my arms, everything's going to be okay. Ma, that's what I need now. A parent to hug me and tell me everything's going to be okay. Don't worry, baby. Everything is going to be most of them. What the hell is going on here? I heard your voice in the hallway and I wanted to see why my bambi was up so late. Don't call me your bambina. Dominic, you wake the bambina. Stop saying that. You voice at your mom. You know, you're not too old for me to take you across my knee. You lay a finger on me, your teeth will be back in Sicily before you are. <laughs> That's my girl. You got lots of spirit, just like your beautiful mom. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> this has gone far enough. What's, What's it gone, gone far enough? I was talking to her. But from now on, she'll be ma number one, and you're ma number two. I think I'm slowly going out of my mind. <laughs> Tomorrow, I'll go to the hospital and have a blood test and settle this whole mess once and for all. Capiche? Now, go to bed. <laughs> oh, thank heaven this will all be settled tomorrow. Thanks, Ma. Oh, I love you, Ma. Ma. <laughs> Ma. You talking to me? off some gold chains on a guy named Nick. <laughs> but I think the laughter spoke for itself. That's enough, Rose. Dorothy, what are you doing up? I couldn't sleep. I just keep thinking about Ma and whose mother she really is. You're worried she might be genius? No, I'm worried she might be Phil Rizzuto. <laughs> Notice the phrase, holy cow, creeping into her conversation. <laughs> Dorothy, you have nothing to worry about. Oh, Blanche, of course I do. I am confronting the possibility that the woman I have lived with and known and loved for my entire life may not even be my mother. But honey, that's exactly the point. What's the difference if she did or didn't give birth to you? You two really know each other and you really love each other. A lot more than most mamas and their children ever do. Nothing that has happened 
or will happen can ever change that. by mistake. Hospitals. Nothing ever works the way it's supposed to. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Just because a hospital vending machine screws up a lousy cup of coffee doesn't mean that the hospital did anything wrong. Oh, sure. A mistake like getting two babies mixed up makes the headlines. But the point is, statistics back me up. Hospitals are remarkably efficient institutions. I mean, seriously. How often does a hospital mix up two babies? Have you ever heard of such a thing? Well, have you? Are you here for the methadone program? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm here for my mother. Surgery? No, blood test. Oh, I have someone going into surgery. I can understand why you'd be a little nervous. Oh, you know, no matter how many times you have to go through something like this, I guess you never really prepared for it. Look at me. My hands are shaking. I'm sweating. My head is spinning. I wish I could be only a little nervous. Dr. Watkins, who O.R.? Dr. Watkins, who O.R.? Well, that's me. I have to run. <laughs> no, what took you so long? All they did was draw a little blood. At my age, that's like wildcat drilling for oil. <laughs> Ma, when are you going to get the results of the blood test? I'm a nervous wreck. It would take a few minutes. Relax, would you? Oh, Ma, how can I relax? Any minute now, somebody can walk in here and tell me you're not really my mother. Let me remind you of something that may set your mind at ease. Are you going to tell a story? No, I'm going to sing a Negro spiritual. <laughs> Shut up and listen. <laughs> do you remember the first day you went to school? No. I do. You looked so adorable in that pink and white polka dot dress. I love that dress. Even after you outgrew it, it was tucked away in an upstairs closet for years. You put it away for sentimental reasons? No, your brother Phil hid it there. <laughs> he used to like to wear it when he visited the firehouse. <laughs> anyway, we got to the school and I walked you to your classroom. And as I turned to go, you started to cry, Mommy, Mommy, I want Mommy. But the teacher told me to go, so I did. And I left you there, screaming, crying, with the tears pouring down your face. I guess all kids go through that the first day of school. No, you were the only one. <laughs> it took a good half hour to calm you down, but that didn't last long. What happened? Every time the teacher turned her back, little Debbie Tance did something she shouldn't. Of course, her mother was the same way every time her father turned his back. <laughs> the woman was a real tramp. Yeah. But uh, you digress. Right. So there's that be putting gum in your hair, hiding your lunch, stealing your toys when no one was looking. When I come to pick you up, I think you're going to say you never want to go to school again. But what do you tell me? You love it. You made a new friend named Debbie. Mom, what the hell does this have to do with Wait a minute, wait a minute. How did you know what happened? I mean, if the teacher didn't see Deb... I saw. I stood at the window and watched you for four hours. In case you needed me. You didn't. No big deal. Any real mother would do that for her kid. Mrs. Patrillo, I have the results of your test.
can see that. You're wearing your heat-seeking stretch pants. Why you not dress for class? That's because I'm not going. Why not? Why not? I will tell you why not. Because I cannot flounce around the dance floor like some cheap, trashy slut in heat. Lord knows I've tried. Blanche, look. Rose, please, I do not need a lecture. I am a klutz. I can accept that. I guess it's no big thing. You're just awkward when it comes to your body. Say what? You have no coordination. Obviously, the stories about all your romantic escapades have been greatly exaggerated. Just what is that supposed to mean? Blanche, if you can't do a simple dance, how do you expect me to believe that story about you and the Flying Finelli Brothers? <laughs> was all true. To this day, I get flushed every time I pass the jungle gym. <laughs> oh, come on, Blanche. That story is no truer than the one you told about you and Buzz in the lunar module. <laughs> oh, that does it. Rose, I would never lie about the U.S. space program. <laughs> Awkward when it comes to my body, huh? No coordination? You want to see your body defy the laws of nature, physics, and Dade County? <laughs> so just hit that music girl and follow my lead. <laughs> Look into my eyes. someone who raises you and loves you and is always there for you. I don't need any more proof than that. Me neither. I raised her. And I was the one who got her through that awkward period. The 50 toughest years of my life. <laughs> That's in the same way we feel about our Gina. It's not that it wouldn't be nice to have you as a daughter... But we love a Gina. And so does Guido. He wrote us he could never love anyone but Gina. He wants us to return her to him right now. Dorothea, I am so sorry we put you through all this. You would have made a wonderful daughter. But then you already have for your mother. Sophia. Arrivederci. Ciao. 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 Oh, what sweet people. Uh, oh, I hope everything works okay for Gina. <laughs> Why shouldn't it? She's got a man waiting for her back home who owns a goat. <laughs> In Sicily, that makes you a yuppie. <laughs> you know, Rose, all that dancing has just done wonders for me. I feel so energized. I feel so alive. And I feel like working this body up into a manic frenzy. <laughs> well, great. We still have time to get to class. Oh, who cares about class? The circus is in town. I said we go look up the flying finale brothers. <laughs> How about a cup of tea? Hmm? Good idea, pussycat. Ma, you never thought I wasn't your daughter, did you? Of course not. Because if you want to check the results... Oh, of don't talk crazy. Go on and make the tea. I'll be right in. 
What have you got there? Nothing. Mom, when you said you forgot your keys and you went back into the waiting room, you got the results of the test, didn't you? What if I did? Let me see the lab results, Mom. This is Petrillo to you. <laughs> then I'm not your daughter. Thatcher Dorothy was just a shopping list. <laughs> you have absolutely no sense of humor. Just like your Uncle Vito. At least I think it was your Uncle Vito. <laughs> kidding, just kidding. <laughs>